Hey, welcome back to my developer best practices series. I'm Cal. Um, there's a link to the whole series here underneath the video. And basically my goal in this series is to make the big commerce development community better. So in this video, I'm going to talk about CSS and what files we should change and, um, and why. So let me share my screen. All right. So have our VS code open and inside assets, SCSS, there is a ton of CSS, SCSS files. And if you're not familiar with SCSS, it's basically CSS combined with SAS so that you get the nested sweetness of SAS, but with more of a typical um, CSS presentation it means you can nest our CSS, which is really, really nice. And I recommend uh, we do that. So there's a lot of files here. Recommend do not touch any of them except for two. Number one is theme CSS. So this is your parent most SCSS file. This calls all of the other ones. All these are part of your theme and don't touch them because you don't, well, when I, when I go over how to update a theme, you'll see why you just want to touch as few files as possible. Um, you do have to touch the themes.scss if you're going to do any kind of custom CSS. And you may at times need to um, update the optimize-checkout.scss. And the reason for that is if they are using the optimized checkout, which 99% of big commerce merchants do, it doesn't load all this theme CSS. It goes off of its own, uh, its own full, uh, file. So if you need to edit something in the checkout, just come into optimize-checkout.scss and load something here at the bottom, right? Now, for the rest of the theme, what you want to do is, you know, if you only need to edit a couple things, not a big deal, just add them at the bottom of your theme.scss. But realistically, your developer, you're going to do more than just that. So what I want you to do is create a custom SCSS file, and then we will reference it from this page. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to create a folder and we're going to call it uh, custom. And then this, this needs to go right under the SCSS um, parent folder. All right. And inside this folder, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it underline custom.scss and I recommend just use that file name because it's going to be super clear that this is a custom file down the road. You want to use an underline so that it doesn't conflict with the way that um, BigCommerce bundles things and they do from time to time change how the how the bundle works. So up until several months ago for example we didn't have to actually put this in a custom folder but we find that it's less problematic now. So custom folder with underline custom dash I'm sorry underline custom dot scss my my tongue's not working today to talk you guys through this all right so now what we need to do is we need to reference this in our in our uh, theme css so that it actually gets loaded and this is actually really easy we just need to come to theme dot scss mm -hmm. and at the very bottom do import custom slash custom just like that. So it automatically it doesn't need the extension. It's just going to look for a file name in there. And although we called it underline, they're going to strip that out of it and just look for something that says custom. So just like that. So this is creating the file in a folder, super obvious that it's custom. And here we are importing that file into theme and we are importing it down line of all of the other stuff so that the code that we're writing in the custom SCSS file can override things. And that's basically how you want to look at styling on BigCommerce is you don't want to remove styling. You just want to override it where, where you know, your, your theme uh, requires that. Um, let's see here. The last thing I think I want to show you is nesting and keeping your custom CSS file organized. So while we're loading that, um, we can test it just to make sure that this is working. So we'll just give this 
a body, a background of pink, for example. And this will start just so we can see this happening. <clears throat> okay, so if we go back to our page and refresh, there's our body class of pink. All right, so now what I want to show you is that I think that you should I want to put the suggestion out there of keeping your uh, your CSS file, your SCSS file, clean using uh, SCSS. And that starts with creating some organization to your file. And I'm going to just delete this and paste in this starter segment. So this kind of shows you how you can organize it. And so you can put some global styling up here, and there's a comment up here that says global. And then you can go into the header and organize the header, and then the footer, and then the home page, the category pages, um, the product pages, pages, blog, and then other stuff. And if you do it like this, you know, as you're working with dozens or hundreds of um, themes over and over again, this can be really helpful because it means it can be a lot easier to find where your code is instead of having some product stuff at the top and in the bottom and trying to figure out where all the stuff is that's kind of conflicting. Um, when you do it like this, it's just nice and organized. And so what I would do here for the code that we put in here, which is a body background of pink, I would actually just put it up here in the, in the body, just like that. And now if we wanted to override this, for example, on a page like your product page, for example, so we can say on the page type of product, let's go down to the product page section and say body dot page type product. Let's do a background of orange. So now we've just defined the background site wide as pink, but on the product page specifically, oops, no space, because this is a, a class on body. On the product page specifically, now we're going to have an orange background. So any other pages, like on the category pages, it should still be pink. Just like that, right? Now, <clears throat> with the way that SES nests, if you're not familiar with it, you can say, okay, within this page type of product, let's have a, a subclass of product view, right? And let's give that a background of yellow, for example. And obviously, you don't want all these crazy colors, <clears throat> but by nesting things like this when you know when you when you say maybe target like an h1 for example by doing it this way now we're only targeting the h1s on the the product pages right so this isn't going to conflict with code anywhere else because it's been nested under the product pages and if it is something that's truly meant to be something site-wide then it can be applied up here in the global section right so if you do this you know it should keep things nice and organized um, the one thing to point out here is on category pages, our, you know, our default uh, CSS skeleton does have like an overall category page type, and then we have a separate target for cards. And the reason for that is you have cards that show up on multiple places. So certainly on your, um, on your category pages, right? So like right here, if I wanted to target the like right here you can see article class card and so if I wanted to target just like the uh, just the title here underneath this for example so the card title then I could say you know font weight bold let's say right but if I target that site-wide, then it's going to affect everything site-wide, but it may not be specific enough. So we like to kind of tamp it down by saying anywhere that there's a card, and then that card class should be the, the parent element anywhere that there is a, uh, a 
product card. So we would target it like this, right? So the card has like an H3 with a card title, and that should apply the styling that I'm applying basically anywhere that there's a product card. So like, let's say, let's also take this card body and give it a background of, is mauve a color? Nope, guess not. Oh, magenta, that's cool. All right, so card body, just like this. And that's that's going to be nested within a uh, card, right? So anywhere that there's a card, the card body inside the card and the H3 card title is going to receive this styling treatment. So if I go into this product, now we're not on the we're not on the category page, but we do still have cards in here, uh, which is the related products down here, right? So we we've still isolated the styling of all the cards to one segment and it's nice and clean and you can see we could do it right here with just you know maybe a dozen or two dozen lines of code just style all the cards at once um but yeah this is this is my suggestion and clearly maybe this is a little bit ocd showing you like how to how to nest you know and commentize your your custom css file uh scss file but I wanted to show you guys kind of like what organization can look like and maybe you have better organization than me one of the guys on my team like if he's watching this he he alphabeticalizes all of the all of his css so i'm not suggesting you guys go that far he knows it's funny but he still does it anyway um but you know just kind of grouping this stuff up and nesting it in ways and you could also say like within within these uh you know within these maybe like you know, we have like a media media query inside the nest. So we can say at media, you know, max width 800, for example. Um, anyway, so that's how you create your CSS file. That's how you apply it. This is how you don't touch files that you shouldn't have. This is how you nest your, your styling and kind of organize your CSS file. Hopefully that helps you guys. And like I said before, you know, please click on the link here to watch the full series. And hopefully we can just all do better work on BigCommerce together. Thanks a lot.